My name is Joe Clark. I'm the uh, product manager for uh, the data recorders for an events as Eurotherm. And today what I'm going to be talking about is the install and setup uh, of ReviewFull to run as a service. Uh, for those of you who don't know, ReviewFull is our uh, data archive uh, review program uh, which allows you to uh, archive all the information from your data recorder and then uh, look at the graphical trends um, at a later time. Okay, so the version that I'm going to be installing is uh, Review 4.5. It is the latest uh, full version of Review. Um, it can run on any operating system from Windows XP uh, to Windows 7, as well as Windows 2003 um, Server, as well as Windows to, uh, Server 2008. Um, and the system I'm currently running is Windows 7 64-bit, so the 32-bit and 64-bit variants uh, do not cause an issue uh, regarding the install. So I went ahead and uh, loaded the executable. It extracted the files and I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the install. Uh, the first screen pops up is a welcome screen. We can go ahead and click next. Uh, feel free to read through the license agreement and once you do so you can go ahead and accept the terms. Uh, I would recommend just selecting complete so that it installs all the required files and when it's done um, it will pop us up to the next step so we'll go ahead and let that install and when it gets done we'll proceed with the next step in the process okay now that the install has completed uh, we get the following screen uh, you can feel free to read the readme file if you want but for this uh, purpose we will not so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this and click on the finish button now part of review full requires you to do a restart on your computer so before you hit yes just be sure to save any documents that you currently have open um, and then go ahead and proceed with the yes uh, again when the PC shuts down and reboots we'll proceed with the next step in the installation Okay, now that we have installed Review, uh, we have restarted our PC, we can now proceed with the next step. Now what we're going to look at now is going about adding a account so that Review can run as a service. Now, there's basically three steps to this. Uh, the first step that we need to do is actually adding the Review account. So the first thing we'll do is go over to the Start menu click the start button and then in this search uh, program and files uh, go ahead and type in C-O-M-P M-G-M-T dot M-S-C for computer management and when you do so you're gonna see an icon pop up click on the icon and when this window pops up the next thing you want to do is look on the left hand side here underneath local users and groups click on the arrow to expand and then click on the folder for users now in this main window here we have three users currently set up administrator guest and myself Joe Clark so what we need to do is actually add another account just for review let's right click in the window click on new user and let's give it a username of review full name is up to you what you want to put I'm just going to re uh, repeat exactly what I had above as review description I'll leave blank you will have to put in a password and once you do that the next uh, couple of boxes you see below um, you do need to uncheck the user must change password at next login and then make sure that user cannot change password as well as password never expires are both checked now regarding the username, feel free to give it any kind of username that you want. I just left it as review to keep it simple. Once complete, go ahead and hit create. Then go ahead and hit close. You'll notice that there's a new account uh, listed underneath the entire list here as review. Its full name is also review. So that's the first step in the process of setting up review as a service. Once you're done with this, go ahead and close on the X to close. Again, let's go back to our start menu, and this time let's tr uh, type in SECPOL for security policy.msc. Again, another icon will pop up. Go ahead and click on that. This time we're going to see a list of folders on the left hand side, 
And what we need to focus on is the folder listed as local policies. Let's go ahead and expand that folder. And this time, let's go ahead and click on user write assignment. On the right hand side here, we have a series of policies that are currently enabled or being used on the computer. What we need to look for is the policy that's titled log on as a service. As you see, I've got highlighted right here. Go ahead and right click on this, or you can actually double click on it, and let's go ahead and add a user or group. Now, a couple things that we're looking at right now, uh, we need to be sure that we're looking at the right location. 99% of the time, the location will be correct, as you see here, which is highlighted. This is the name of your computer. Um, if it wasn't for uh, some reason, or if you're on a domain, you may need to click on the locations button to pick from a list of different computers on the network. Next thing that you want to do is click on the advanced tab. Um, with that being done, do a find now. And when you do a find now, it's going to look at any user account associated with the name of the computer you see above. So as you can see below, here are all the accounts or groups associated with my computer. And we can go down to the user account review that I just created a minute or two ago. Go ahead and highlight or click on the review account. Go ahead and OK. Now you'll notice that the computer name followed by the account name is now within this box. We can go ahead and hit OK. And now we know that the review account is associated or is tied into the log on as a service account. <clears throat> Once you're done with this, go ahead and hit OK. Again, feel free to close up this window. And now we've knocked out the second step of setting up Review to Run as a Service. The last step that we actually have to do, however, is setting up the review account to be an administrator and not just a normal standard user. This is a pretty simple process. All you have to do is click on the Start menu, go to the Control Panel, and again, by default, uh, your control panel will look like this. However, I, just out of preference, choose large icons. You scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see an uh, icon for user accounts. Click on that. When you do this, you have an option to manage another account. And then on the right-hand side here, you see the account we just created called Review. And as I mentioned, it is listed as being a standard user. As a standard user, it can't actually run as a service. So what we need to do is go ahead and click on Review. And under this, we need to go down to where it says Change the Account Type. In this window, simply select Administrator so that it can be set up as an administrator and click Change Account Type. Once that's complete, Review is now under the administrator group and you are ready to uh, go on to the next step in setting up review. So go ahead and close out of that. Now what we want to do is open up the review program. So let's go ahead and hit the start menu, go to all programs, go to Eurotherm, and click on the review executable. Now the first window that's going to pop up is going to be a window asking about the master archive folder. The master archive folder is a location uh, designed to back up all files being transferred over from the recorder. So the first time we run this, we will need to set this up. So go ahead and click on the yes button. And by default, it plugs in the following address on your computer, program data slash Eurotherm slash review. Now, now keep in mind that program data is not program files. So keep that in mind, program data is a hidden file by default. And a way to show that folder is if you go to My Computer, click on your C drive, you'll notice here the Program Data folder is a slightly different color than the remaining folders to indicate that it's hidden. All you need to do is click on the Organize button, go down to where it says Folder and Search Options. Underneath the View tab, go down to where it says Hidden Files and Folders. Be sure that Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives is selected and go ahead and hit OK. That way you'll be able to see the program data uh, folder we were talking about followed by the review folder. So if you want to leave this by default, feel free to leave it as is. However, you can put this on a network space or another location on your computer 
as you feel necessary. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we've got the review program. Within the review program, you have a couple different ways to pull data from the recorder and put it into your review database. For this example, we are going to set this up so that we can allow the review program to connect to the recorder over, my, or over regular internet uh, TCP IP. So go ahead and click on the instrument, click on setup, and then go to TCP IP. Within here, these are where this window gives you the ability to add all the recorders that you may have coming into one centralized database. So the first thing we need to do is click on Add Instrument. We put in the IP address of the recorder that we want to connect to. The identifier is something that the Master Archive folder is going to reference. What I would recommend doing is giving it the same exact identification as the recorder itself. You can leave the connection timeout at 3 seconds, but one thing I would recommend doing is selecting Use Passive FTP. Use Passive FTP won't hurt if you use it, but if you don't use it, you may run into issues with certain software uh, firewalls such as McAfee. So I would recommend selecting Use Passive FTP. Once complete, go ahead and hit OK. Now that you got that done, now we need to uh, set up the last step in the process. So let's go ahead and click on instrument, go to auto backup and transfer. And in this window, this is where we actually need to set up all the logon and destination uh, information for the recorder. So the first thing we want to look at is the instrument username. Type in engineer as the username and then the password of 100. Now the engineer's password can be changed to something different, but by default it's 100. So for this purpose, we will leave it as 100. Next, you'll notice that there's a little box uh, underneath backup. In order for this to actually work, you need to at least backup the files. So make sure that that box under enabled is checked. And when doing so, you'll also notice that the destination is set to the master archive folder followed by the name of the recorder we just previously set up. Next, underneath transfer to database, we want to make sure that this is check marked as well. What this means is that after it's done backing up all the files, it will transfer it to the review database so that at a later time you can regenerate those history files, uh, meaning that you can recreate the chart or export to a CSV file. After that, you want to make sure that you have run as a service checked. And then what we want to look at is how often we want to automate this process. One of the nice features of Review Full is allowing Review to run as a service, meaning that you can have Review go out to your recorder at a specified interval and pull the data in for you automatically. So right now, looking at my computer, it is just after 4 o'clock in the afternoon and I want to go ahead and start this process at 4.30. So the first thing we want to do is look at the day of the month. As today is the 1st of June, we are going to select 1 as the day. The time format is in military or 24 hour time, so we're going to go ahead and select 16 as the hour for 4 o'clock, and then the minute as 30, meaning the first time this is going to run is at 4.30 in the afternoon. Next, you'll see that there's a selection for repeat every. You can do this as often as every five minutes, or you can run it as often as once a month. My recommendation would be anywhere between the 15 minutes to an hour mark. Uh, for this example, I'll use 15 minutes. Once you're done doing this, go ahead and click on the OK. You'll have a service logon window pop up. The only time that this will pop up is the first time you set this up or if at a later time you go back and uncheck the run as a service and recheck the service button again. So in the enter username we're going to put in the review username that I just created followed by the password. If you're on a domain uh, enter in the domain name um, however for this example I am not on a domain and once you're done, go ahead and hit OK. Within three seconds, you should see a review icon pop up in the lower right-hand corner, indicating that review is now running as a service. 
This being said, we're now done setting up review to run as a service, and I can simply close out a review. If I ever shut down my PC, and next time it starts back up, review will start automatically and pull at its next interval. That's setting up review to run as a service. It's a relatively simple task. Um, and once you have set it up, you can basically walk away from it and never have to worry about setting it up again. Uh, my information is on the screen. If you need to get a hold of me, feel free to either call or send me an email. Thanks.